Hey there Homestead, it's Elizabeth from Community and today we're going to be going over the elements that are available in Website Builder. So if you look to the left of your Website Builder, you're going to see at the top of this left panel it says Elements. And if you click on that, it's going to bring up a bigger menu that has categories of elements. So you can scroll through all the elements that are available. And there's a search bar where you can search for specific elements. So today I'm just going to go over the elements that are available, sort of go through categories one by one, and just do a brief overview of what's there. Now I'm starting at the top. The first category is button. Now there are six buttons available. They're all just different designs of a button. Um, for example, there's a simple button, a gradient button, a round button, an icon button, an icon and text button, and just a regular text button. They all have the same function. They're all just design options, so it really just depends on what looks best with your site. Moving on, there's contact. Now, there are three options under contact, but we're only going to talk about contact form and join my mailing list right now, since there is a maps option in the categories. So the contact form looks something like this, and you can manage the fields, so you can choose different questions, you can add you know, a slot for email, phone number, a URL, text boxes, stuff like that. And it gets sent to whatever email you have set up in the settings. Then the join my mailing list element is for people to subscribe. So you can compile a list of people to send notifications or announcements or information to. Now one note I want to make with this element is when you first place it on your website, by default it's going to be set up as a pop-up. So what that means is when you go to preview or you publish your site and you go to see it, you're not going to see that element where you placed it, but it's going to pop up after a certain number of seconds what you set up in the element like that. So don't worry if you place the element and then you go to preview it and you don't see it. That is on purpose because it's a pop up. If you don't like that, you can choose to go under settings and change it to an embedded box. That way it just stays in this position. Um, but the pop-up box is just a little bit more attention grabbing. It forces people to deal with it by either subscribing or exiting out. So you're going to get a better response rate with that one. Next step is containers. Now there are two options under containers and that is a box or tabs. Now both of these are really useful features. A box is a container that you can place different elements and when you move the box all of the elements are grouped together and moved together. So this is really easy for you know if you know you're going to have to move certain elements together or you want certain elements to be grouped together always even in the mobile. See? Um, and then tabs are basically just boxes that you can add multiple slides to. So I added four slides and I just put a different number in each of them. But you can put any element in these tabs and then you can either put navigation buttons or if you go into the settings, you can set the transitions for the tabs to transition automatically. After that, there's files, and there's two options under files as well, and that's Flash or Document. Now, Flash is really outdated. Um, it's sort of not compatible with a whole lot these days, so if you have something, you know, Flash to put on your website, you can do so. But just keep in mind, like this, many viewers might not be able to see it because it's not compatible with their browser or their computer. Um, for documents, you can definitely upload a document and allow your customers to download it. This is how they're going to appear on your website. If you're looking to have documents appear as the pages they have, um, you're going to have to create images of the pages and paste them as images um, because when you upload a document through here, it's going to be a download button for your page visitors to download it to their computer. Uh, next up is HTML and page embed. Now this one's really important because if there's any feature that isn't available in Website Builder, you can certainly still get that on your website by getting the code from a third party provider that offers that feature. Um, for example, if you have a contact form that you need people to be able to download files and send them to you, um, you can go to a third party provider, 
create your form that has that option and then get the HTML code and embed it in that element. You just paste the code from that company into the embed HTML element and it'll place the element on your website. For the embed web page, um, you can certainly do that as well. Just keep in mind that the website can't be too big. Like for example, if I tried Google, I couldn't embed Google on our website because it's just too big. I actually embedded this website in its own website um, and it's small enough that it worked. So if you need to put a website on a page of your website, then you can certainly do that. All right, next up is images, and images are super important on the website as well. Um, and there's three options, a single image, an image gallery, or an icon. Now, the single image is pretty simple. Obviously, if you just want to add an image, you can do so by either uploading your own or using our stock images. The same goes for the image gallery, but that's for multiple images you want people to be able to scroll through. For image gallery, you can also change the source and pull images from either your Facebook page or your Instagram. But just keep in mind that it pulls those images indiscriminately. So it's going to pull every image and you won't be able to go through and edit it and remove images. So only choose these options if you know you want all pictures from your Facebook or Instagram on your website. Otherwise, I would stick with adding the images yourself. Uh, lastly, with the image gallery, you can either set navigation buttons or if you go under advanced and then settings, you can set transitions that scroll through automatically. So that just depends on what kind of look you're going for on your website. And then icons. So there are tons of icons available and these can be used for buttons or decoration. Um, and again, there's so many of them. So to make it easier, there's a search bar up at the top that you can search for something specific and it'll pull up all of the icons that fit that keyword that you typed in so it's easier to choose from. And once you place the icon, you can change the size and color by going under the settings or by just simply expanding them. All right, next up is live feeds. Now there's a bunch of options under live feeds. I'm only gonna talk about two of them because the rest are duplicates. Um, image gallery we saw earlier. Instagram is actually just the image gallery pulled from Instagram and video gallery we'll talk about in a little bit, but the Facebook timeline and Twitter feed are both elements that you can connect to your business social media page and it'll pull your most recent posts for people to be able to scroll through. And then if people click on your Facebook post, it's going to bring them into the Facebook platform if they're logged in on their computer and they'll be able to see your page. Same goes with Twitter. Um, so that's really useful if, you know, you want people to be able to connect to your social media, which is super important these days. So definitely, you know, utilize those. Uh, after that is Maps. Now, there's just the Google Map option here, um, which is really useful if you have a brick and mortar and you want people to be able to know where you're located to bring in business. Um, and you can either just size this map however you want to to go along with the other elements, like on a contact page, or... What a lot of people do is they choose to make the map an entire section. So you stretch the map across an entire section and that has a really cool design look to it. So that's what it looks like. Um, and to set up your marker in the map, you just click map markers and add a marker, delete the default address in there and put your own and then, you know, choose what icon you want to use and then click OK. The music option, which is next up, is through SoundCloud. Now, SoundCloud is an audio distribution and music sharing platform that you can create a free account for, um, and you can upload your own audio, and then get the URL from SoundCloud and paste it in the element, or you can find a song that you like and get the URL for that, and then you paste it in where it says track URL, go to settings, and paste it in there. Then when you go to your website, people are going to be able to click play and it's going to play that audio. Next up is PayPal for the categories. So PayPal buttons are really useful if you have like just a few products you want to sell. 
um, or something you're not selling a whole lot of, that it's not really worth it for you to upgrade to an e-commerce platform. Um, you can set up under the buy now button, you can attach it to your PayPal account and then set up like a product name, the price, the shipping and tax. That way people can click it, it'll bring them into PayPal to make that payment. Um, it's just not really ideal if you have a lot of products because it's gonna be outrageous to set that all up and it's just gonna be really kind of messy having all those separate buy now buttons. It's um, also, you don't have as many options available for your store. Um, so again, this is just if you have a few items to sell. Um, and then the donate button, if you want to be able to accept donations, you can also set that up to a PayPal account. And you can also set up the amount. But again, it's not super customizable because you set a certain price so people can donate that amount. Um, so if you want people to be able to donate more than that, I would recommend, you know, going about that a different way. Uh, the shapes, that's pretty self-explanatory. They're just shapes that you can use like design-wise on your website. There's lines so you can use them as like page or element breaks. And then they're just shapes that you can change the color and the size of and use them how you want to on your website, you know, do what you want with those. After that is site navigation, and site navigation is super important. Um, it allows your visitors to navigate your site easier, which makes it more likely that they're going to use your site. Um, this is the most common site navigation element, which is the pages site navigation. Um, it allows people to click through your pages to find the information that they're wanting. Um, this is the same thing. It's just a different style. This is typically used in mobile sites. Um, so that's available as well. And this is a sections menu. It has kind of the same feature for the uh, pages menu, but it's for one page and the different sections that are available. So if you have a really long page and you want people to be able to go directly to the part of the page that is relevant for them, you can set up sections with the different titles so people can go directly to what they're, they're wanting to see. And then lastly, on the site navigation category, there's scroll top button and scroll bottom button. Now you would put this at the bottom of your website to allow customers to scroll back up to the top really easy. And alternately, you put this on the top of your website to allow people to scroll to the bottom really easily. And it just creates a better customer experience. If you have a really long page, they don't just sit there scrolling through. Um, it'll just bring them right to the top or bottom. And there are a ton of options in the next category, which is social. And this is also super important. So there's social links icons, which allow you to set up links to your social media pages. And you can choose which social media you want to feature. And then connect your specific URL in here. So that way when people click on these icons, they get directed to the platform directly to your page. So that's really useful. Um, next, this is share buttons. So if someone's on your page and they click this, it's going to bring them to their Facebook if they're logged in with a post to share your website. So that's a really good way to allow people to share your content. Uh, this is a like button. You connect it to your business page and allows people to like it. Uh, this is a share button and it allows them to share your page on their Facebook, but they have to be logged in on their computer. Um, the Facebook comments is also a really cool feature, but people have to be logged in on their computer to be able to use it. And so when you're on the published page, people can type in here and, you know, write a message that'll show up on your site. So it's a really cool feature. And this is the Facebook page plugin, and it just goes a little bit further than the other elements and actually showing a preview of your page so that it can like, send a message to, see what other friends have liked. Uh, the next three options under social are for Google+. Now, I will say that Google+, isn't hugely popular, so much so that Google is going to be discontinuing it later this year. But if you do decide to use it, there's a Google+, Plus button for them to like your Google+, Plus page, for them to share your website on their Google+, Plus page, or for them to follow your Google+, Plus page. So those are the different Google+, Plus options. There's also an option for them to share a URL that you put in the settings of this element to their LinkedIn page. Again, like all the other elements, they have to be logged into LinkedIn on their computer to use it, but you can set up the URL you want them to be able to share. 
Um, then there's the Twitter options. This will allow customers to follow your Twitter page. You just have to set it up to your Twitter URL. And this will allow page visitors to tweet your page or your website on their Twitter. So super useful um, for connecting through social media and allowing others to share on social media. So take advantage of those options. Um, next up, there's text. And there are four options under text. It's important to use them for what their purpose is. Um, there's three heading text boxes, heading one, heading two, and heading three. Now, the reason for these are for titles, basically. So I've kind of set it up the way they're supposed to be used. I'm not going to go really in-depth, just a basic overview. H1 is your main title, so like text boxes. H2, you go a little bit more in-depth on that title, but still not giving like the full description, like which text box to use when. For H3, that's your most descriptive title box. So I'll tell you when to use H1, H2, H3, or paragraph text boxes but it's still not giving the information, it's just a title. Then for paragraph, that's when you put the bulk of the information that you're wanting to share on your page. So use those accordingly because it is really useful when it comes to SEO or search engine optimization. Um, lastly, there's the videos option. Now you can either add a single video or a video gallery, and you can add those from either YouTube or Vimeo. You can create free profiles on either video sharing platform. Um, you know, I would just take a look into which one is best for your business. We do have a community article that talks about both of them and their pros and cons. So we'll definitely put a link in the description for that. So you can take a look and see which one is the best for you. Um, but you just upload your video to either YouTube or Vimeo, and then you copy the URL from that platform and you paste it here and then it'll pull the video. Um, for the video gallery, same basic concept, you can paste the, uh, the URLs here, or you can pull all the videos from a YouTube channel or a YouTube playlist. So those can be really useful as well. So those are the elements that are available through Website Builder. Um, use them to your best advantage to make your site as good as it can be. Um, and then we're going to be creating more of these videos for you guys so you can use Website Builder to the best of your ability. But if you think of an idea that we haven't put out yet that would be really useful in a video, please drop those in the comments below. We would definitely appreciate that.